Hey there, baby. What you got there? Nothing. Hmm. Looks like a rather tangible nothing to me. In fact, it looks like some sort of notepad. Maybe some sort of sketchbook? Or a diary? <laughs> hey, I'm not actually looking at what you're doing in it. I'm just inferring from whatever I can see from over here that it looks rather important to you. Like some sort of, I don't know, dream journal of sorts? Maybe not necessarily writing down nighttime dreams, but goals, ambitions, wants for the future, that sort of thing. Am I kind of in the right ballpark? <laughs> you see, you're like that open book. So very easy to read. <laughs> so, what have you written in it? If you don't mind sharing, of course. Baby, what's wrong? Oh, you're looking at that book and you look kind of down. Hey, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Slow down, slow down. So, what does that mean? No, 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 honestly, um, that, from where I'm standing, it kind of sounded like you were being really hard on yourself and really down about, like, having goals, dreams, and aspirations that don't seem graspable. Uh-huh. Okay, sure, I can understand that, but... Well, so what? Dreams don't have to be 100% attainable, you know? Dreams are just that, they're dreams. Everyone is allowed to dream. Everyone. No one has the right to say, Oh, you can't have dreams, you can't have goals even if you have no feasible way of attaining them. You're allowed to have whatever dreams you want. Whatever goals, ambitions, I don't know, passion projects, even if it's just purely metaphorical, even if you know that you're never going to be able to achieve within the realms of reasonability what it is that you want to get to in the end of this goal, you can still dream about it. Having dreams and creating these little fantasies that we can sort of look at and say that is a really good thought that I really enjoy and even though I know it's not real like it's nice to have that as a sort of escapism you know just having that in our minds that's what makes us humans different from any other animal we understand our own limitations and our own mitigating circumstances but it doesn't stop us from enjoying the idea and the fantasy. Come on, come here. Let me show you something. <sighs> I haven't opened this notepad in years. <laughs> so, when I was a kid, I had this idea that I was going to open a theme park. Do you want to know what I came up with as a name? <laughs> I called it The Land of Myths and Legends. <laughs> yeah, I know. 
bit of a mouthful, but for what the theme of the theme park was, it made sense to me. The entrance was going to be this grand archway, like some sort of fairy door. And there'd be fairies all around, like statues of fairies on the arch. And the people at the ticket booth would be dressed as goblins and elves and all sorts of different mythological creatures, you know? In fact, all the staff would be based on mythological creatures and they'd all have their different roll within the park. Well, for example, the elves would be the caterers. They would work all the food stands and they would be like barmaids and bartenders, that sort of thing, you know? And they were talking ye old worldy English. <laughs> um, the security guards would be dressed like the boogeyman. And they would act all silly when the children weren't misbehaving so that the children weren't scared of them. But if someone actually started misbehaving, they could get tough real quick. <laughs> um, the lifeguards in the pools would be selkies. Yeah, or merfolk, you know, but selkies were my obsession back then. <laughs> Um, oh, and the ride attendants, the people who would take tickets or check wristbands and just make sure that people weren't cutting lines and were, like, loaded in safely, would be dressed like fairies, both male and female. <laughs> yeah, I was all about the equality of the genders back then. <laughs> Oh, I can't without cringing. <laughs> but, yeah, like, every different kind of staff member would have a different uniform based on a mythological creature. And I would even have, like, different themes for different seasons as well. So, for example, Easter bunnies as the ride attendants. Or Santa Claus as the ride attendants during the Christmas period, but the caterers would be elves, and the security cards would be Krampus. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably worked it out. Look, I even designed some of the costumes. <laughs> oh, you like that one? <laughs> yeah, I was really proud of that one. Oh god, there's some of my Halloween ones. <laughs> I wanted to make them more sort of campy Halloween rather than spooky Halloween because, you know, kids and all that. <laughs> I want to give children a good time and fun jump scares, but not mentally scar them for life. <laughs> hmm. I even worked out, like, where I would put the various different rides, even drew some of them, look. This is Snacking Nessie. <laughs> it's a roller coaster where you would go all the way up here, and then there'd be a massive drop. Free fall, complete free fall drop, your legs are hanging and everything. And then right at the bottom of the drop there, there's a massive great statue of Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster, and it swallows the entire roller coaster train whole. And you then start going through the innards of Nessie, and you would see things like, I don't know, a drunken Scotsman, like animatronics of drunken Scotsmen, drinking away their sorrows as they wait to be digested by the beast. <laughs> little morbid, I know, but, you know, it'd be done in a fun, campy way. <laughs> oh, this one. Bigfoot Hunt. <laughs> Basically, think Laser Quest, but with Bigfoot. So, 
you could do it two different ways. You could have teams, red versus blue, or a complete free for all. And the idea is that you shoot the lasers at all the other different players, one point for shooting an enemy team member, but there'd be one or two members of staff dressed up as Bigfoot going round as well. And it would be five points for every shot on a Bigfoot. What would be the prize for winning? Well, I did think of maybe having some sort of small Bigfoot plushie as the prize for the person who gets the most points, or the team that gets the most points. <laughs> yeah, I even thought out the prizes. That's how much I was invested into this idea. <laughs> Oh my god, and this is this was my dark room as well. <laughs> so the idea was that you would go into this dark room, and it was a water ride as well. You'd be loaded onto this, like, kind of Viking gondolier kind of thing. And the staff member, like, giving almost like a guided tour, would be dressed like a Valkyrie. And they would talk about the various different creatures you would see and they'd all be water themed so you'd go through let's say the Japanese exhibits and you'd have kappas coming out of the water and you'd have all these different yokai and then there'd be mermaids and sirens you'd go to Norway and there'd be a knockin this great big water goblin that all you see is the the head rising out of the water and just yellow glowing eyes and that's all you would see of the knockin <laughs> i i know is it, that that's a bit scary but i wanted to mix a bit of campy and scary and you know there'd be plenty of warnings and everything now i know reasonably speaking i'm never going to have the money nor the space like the land to get this thing built but it doesn't stop me from dreaming does it exactly it's just fun to have the fantasy there i can literally just close my eyes and visit this theme park in my head and i can see the different areas where I've got the Nessie ride, I've got a ride based on the madness of the Slender Man. And it's just fun, you know? Okay, you may not be actively working towards the dreams you have, but that doesn't mean anything. Your dreams are your own. And you're aware of where you are now, and where you wish you could be, where you want to be, where maybe you one day could be. If the stars align correctly, and you put in the work. But this is why we have dreams. It's to motivate us. Yeah? Use these dreams of yours to motivate yourself. Remind yourself what all this is for. And sure, you're going to think, am I dreaming too big? Am I not dreaming big enough? But it's all a learning curve, isn't it? If I had some big fancy investor suddenly say to me, I heard you've been working on an idea for a theme park. I'm a multi-billionaire who's got far more money than sense. Let's get it built. I would say, <laughs> when do we start? Like, I would jump at the opportunity. But I know it's not going to just drop into my lap. I'd have to work for it. I'd have to pitch my idea. I'd have to, you know. But even if I can't do that, in the real world, if I can't do that in the physical world, I could potentially make 
a VR experience. I could tell someone else about my idea and say, Hey, you're a roller coaster engineer. Could you tell me how I could potentially make this and, you know, maybe come up with some plans that I could then sell to someone else later? Who knows? But you never know until you let yourself find out. These dreams obviously mean something to you, or you wouldn't be writing and drawing about them, would you? So use that to motivate yourself to aim for that better thing in the future, yeah? Even if these dreams don't become reality, you know, let's say you dream to be an astronaut, you know? You might not necessarily get to be an astronaut, but you could still make something using this dream as motivation. Yeah? <laughs> oh, baby, I love you so much. Hmm. And I want you to know that you never, ever, ever have to be ashamed of having dreams, okay? <laughs> That's my baby. Come here, give me a hug. Mm. Hugs make it all better. <laughs> You don't have to tell me about these dreams if you don't want to, but if ever you want to share them, I'm here to listen, okay? Who knows? Maybe we might even come up with a plan on how to achieve one or two of them. <laughs> I look forward to hearing them, baby. I love you, my special little dreamer. <laughs>